Hey guys, in this video I have the iRange X RX4 Pro PPM Multi Protocol External TX Multi Module with a built in battery. This external module is perfect for transmitters that don't have an external module bay like the one on the left here, the Tyrannus QX7. There is an IRX4 which you can buy, which runs in serial mode, which works perfectly for that. But for transmitters that don't actually have that module bay, the RX4 here works a lot better because it just plugs into your trainer port. So what you do is you mount it out in the back here with some double-sided tape, and then you'd stick it on on the back here. And it comes with this cable here. This is the trainer cable. One end of it is like a 3.5 millimeter and the other end is like a 2.5 millimeter. So the 2.5 millimeter plugs into the external module itself. And then the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack will plug into your trainer port. Once you have those hooked up, you can turn it on by flicking the switch on the left hand side and you can see that the light turns on. So the RX4 Pro will work great for transmitters that don't have a module bay or, ha or transmitters that don't have native firmware support. This version only works in PPM mode and unlike the uh, other iRange X IRX4 which works in serial mode, Serial mode allows protocol selection in the menu if the transmitter's firmware supports it, like OpenTX or ERSky9X. So serial mode definitely is preferred if your transmitter supports it. However, there are a lot of transmitters that don't have OpenTX support, and this is where this module comes in, which works in PPM mode, which will work with pretty much every transmitter right now because they all support PPM. Also, not every transmitter will have a module bay on the back, but most will have a trainer port. So it's easy to upgrade to a multi-protocol module like this because of that. This multi-protocol module uses the Atmega 328P MCU, which is limited to 32 kilobytes of memory. But since there's only 16 positions on the dial and you're not loading all of the protocols, it should have more than enough space. You have to flash and recompile the firmware in order to change the protocols that are loaded by default. And you can also change the uh, default channel order as well if you plan to uh, recompile the firmware. I have another video with the instructions on how to flash the Atmega version of this module. Links, are, will be, links to the video will be in the description. So uh, check it out if you're interested in updating the, this module. This multi-module comes in three versions. So get the right version for your brand. So it comes in a Flysky, Futaba, and JR. Each brand will have a different channel order. So if you have a Flysky i6, you're going to pick Flysky obviously. If you have a Spectrum, you'll pick a JR. If you have a Futaba, you'll pick Futaba. The default channel order is set in the firmware and you can change it later on if you aren't afraid to compile and flash your own firmware. In this video, I'll demo it with the Devo 10. That's the only transmitter that I have that doesn't have a module bay, so I'm using that as an example. Before I show you how it works, let's take a closer look at the module. Right here is the protocol selection dial. Here's the bind button. Here is the uh, LED. And over here you see the PPM port where you plug in your uh, cable and over on the left is the micro USB port which is used to charge the battery It's not used for updating the module. You still have to uh, solder a header onto that and on the left side You have the on and off switch which turns it on This is what it looks like on the inside when you remove the cover and this is what it looks like when you remove it from its Aluminum casing it has a 520 milliamp hour battery and the PCB board looks very crowded with all the components attached to it this is the only blank space available on the PCB board where you can solder a header and attach a programmer to upload and compile new firmware. In this section, I'll show you how to set your transmitter to output in PPM mode. It's different for every transmitter, but the process is relatively the same. Some transmitters will automatically output in PPM mode the minute you plug something up to the trainer port, like the Spectrums, I believe. While others, you actually have to go into the menus and tell it to output in PPM mode. And this is what you need to do for the Devo 10. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new model. I'm gonna go in here and select an empty slot that is not used. And now I'm gonna name it. So this is where you can put whatever you want. I'm just gonna put something very simple here like a PPM. Next, I'm gonna go down to the very bottom where I can tell it to work in PPM mode. So right now it's in USB HID mode. However, if I scroll to the right, it is PPM mode. And that's all you really have to do. 
and uh, your options may be in a different location but in general that's all you need to do in terms of uh, putting your transmitter in PPM mode. Next we'll go into the mixer settings of your transmitter and this is where you want to double check that your channel order is correct for your transmitter so in my case I'm AETR so it's AETR aileron elevator throttle and rudder and this is where you can reverse your channels I know for a fact that my channel 1 has to be reversed so I'm gonna go into mine in here and reverse it so that it'll go in the op opposite direction and also my rudder is needs to be reversed as well so I know this through trial and error so if you're flying your quadcopter and you notice your your ailerons are going left when you move the stick right and this is where you need to modify your mixer and change the reversing and that's pretty much it for a simple four channel quadcopter now we're going to bind the multi-module to a quadcopter so make sure you have the trainer cable plugged up correctly and it should come with an adapter for your transmitter so depending on which version you buy it should come with the appropriate adapter to plug in your transmitter the end of it should be a headphone jack and the adapter should be a female one. Fortunately for me, my transmitter actually just uses a regular standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for the trainer port. So I actually don't need an adapter. Plug the other end of the cable into your trainer port. My transmitter's trainer port is on the left here. Next, make sure you have the proper protocol selected on the back here using this dial so it does come with the instructions with that shows you which uh, protocol is mapped to which letter or number so I'm actually gonna switch mine to the letter D which is used for the V2X2 which is the protocol used by the JJRC 1000A plug up the battery to your quadcopter and now it should be in binding mode where the lights are flashing very fast and on the multi-module you want to hold down the bind button hold it down while you turn on the flick the switch on the side there and keep on holding it for about two seconds after letting go of the bind button you'll notice that the lights on the quadcopter will remain steady and that's when you know it is bound to the multi-module the iRange X RX4 Pro is a nice option for those who have older transmitters that don't have a module compartment or a a radio that natively supports multi-modules since this just plugs through the trainer port pretty much every programmable radio will have a trainer port and can operate in ppm mode this external module is also a good option for those who don't want to open up their transmitter to solder on modules however if you have a transmitter that can run firmware that supports multi-modules you're better off getting the stm version of the irange x irx4 so if you want a Tyrannus or a 9XR Pro, that's a much better option. That's it for the video. If you're interested in this module, links will be in the description as usual. Anyways, share, comment, like, or subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.